hope that works. This is a Gibson heavy duty commercial freezer. It's got those old timey <laughs> freezer racks. Uh, this is a very old style of freezer, but it's the one that my butcher told me if you're doing at home butchering, you wanna have that kind of freezer, not the more modern freezers. I'll tell you why in this video, and I'm also gonna give you a tour of my very simple homestead butcher shop. This is something anybody can set up in a garage. I'm gonna show you the basic moving parts. It's not expensive to do, it's very simple, and it's gonna make your butcher days, whether that's deer or lambs or pigs or whatever you wanna butcher at home, very simple. Let's get into the at home homestead butcher shop. So this is my workshop. It's not a butcher area per se, but it has all the features that I want in a good butcher area. As you can see, I have a big white tail buck that I'm gonna be butchering up today. But if you were gonna be butchering a pig, a lamb, a goat, any animal on your homestead, the things that I have here are the things that you'll wanna have in your area. The first one is just a clean space with some good lighting. Good lighting helps when you're cutting the animal, cleaning it, looking for defects, things to remove, and a nice big open area to work just makes working really easy. I have a big table behind me. That's my custom workbench. We built it in this video. You can see how to build that very table. It's on wheels. So I can move that table wherever I need to when I'm working on this deer. If I want to be cutting with my right and stacking things with my left, I can move the table over there. So having a movable table is actually pretty nice, something that's not built in. The next thing that I have in this setup here, which you can't see here, but it's uh, what's holding this deer up is a tractor. Now wait, I know what you're saying. You're saying, Aust, you said this was gonna be something everybody could do on their homestead. I don't have a big John Deere tractor, dude. I get it, you don't need a tractor. What you do need is something that will lift the deer up and down for you as you work on it. Because if you're cutting the deer up high versus down low, it's nice instead of bending over all day and hurting your back to be able to raise and lower it. And you don't need a 30, 40, $50,000 tractor to do that. All you need is something like a block and tackle. You can use ratchet straps. I did that last year. One of the things I've seen that's really handy, instead of having the deer hung by the forks on the tractor arm, they have a pickup truck. They have a mount that goes into your pickup truck that you can ratchet the deer up and down with. I'm gonna have links below to all the gear that I either use or what you could use to replace the gear that I use to help you find what you need. Of course, there are affiliate links. If you use our links, you help support the channel and help us do these videos. And if you do any Amazon shopping, shop through amsteady.com. It'll forward you to Amazon. Doesn't cost you a penny extra, but helps us do what we do. So, a way to raise and lower your game today or your animal. Today I'm gonna to be using the tractor, the boom, lifting it up and down. But again, you can use block and tackle, ratchet straps, uh, you could tie a knot and have a pulley. Whatever you could use, just make sure that whatever you're tying it off with is good and strong. You'll see I'm using a couple really heavy duty ratchet straps. These are like machine grade ratchet straps. They're made for guys who are like towing heavy machinery. You know, when you're working with a sharp knife on an animal, sometimes you're, you're cutting and pulling and cutting and you don't want a strap to break on you while you got a sharp knife and suddenly all the things are working and jerking against you. So make sure whatever you hang it up with is good and strong. And I like to hang it on the two ratchet straps separate because that spreads the deer open as you're working on it. If you just tie both legs together, it's hard to work in that space. So make sure whatever you tie it to spreads it open so it's easy to work and adjusts up and down. My table. 
This table I already talked about a little bit. It's on wheels so I can move it. On top of the table I will have a cutting board to just do my quick work with. I will have some knives. I have my knife kit right here. There's my knife kit. It's an outdoor edge kit. Link, again, link below or link right there. I have a fillet knife. I have a skinner and I have a caper. Really good set of knives. I also added a steel to the kit and I have a bone saw, which is helpful. Although, honestly, today, instead of using that bone saw, I will be using that bone saw. There's something easy about a power tool and cutting through bone. <laughs> You'll notice I have a scabbard at my hip for my knives. This is super handy as I'm working. If I'm using a skinning knife, or then I go to the fillet knife to have them right on my hip, instead of having to walk back and forth. Little things like that, to be able to just, you know, change them out, that is a huge time saver. So I really suggest, this is a great kit. This Outdoor Edge kit I've used for years. I butchered like 10, just so many animals with this kit. Really awesome. You'll notice I'm wearing a no-cut glove. I like to have the safety of a no-cut glove. Also helps with just wiping the meat and removing hair as you go. So I'm gonna be cutting the muscles off the deer, taking it, putting it on the table, working on the table at a reasonable height, nice and level. After I'm done cutting things, grinding things, cleaning things, whatever I'm doing on the table, I move over to the fridge and the freezer. It is nice to have a separate fridge and freezer to do this. Your one in your kitchen is probably not gonna be in your workspace. Uh, that said, make sure the area you keep your fridge and freezer in doesn't freeze because if you put the fridge and freezer like outside in a garage where it gets too cold, it can mess them up. So I have a cheap fridge here, fridge freezer. The reason I like to have a fridge is actually uh, to cool the meat down, but not freeze it while I'm working on it. If I'm cutting off a big muscle, I can throw it in the fridge. I can throw it in the freezer quick, it won't instantly freeze, but if you just wanna keep something cold, throw it in that fridge. I can even age deer in the fridge, and I've shown how to do that in that video, so you can see how to age deer, or any other game that you wanna age in the refrigerator. It does not age in the freezer. Once you put meat into the freezer, kills the enzymes, aging stops. So if you wanna age something like a big buck, help it become more tender, that sort of thing, uh, better quality, rich flavor, go with the fridge. I also have an old commercial freezer, like my butcher suggested, and it is working. What's better about these old commercial style freezers? Uh, these older freezers where you see the coils right here, this is all very cold to the touch. If you're trying to cool your meat down quickly, take it from that temperature where bacteria grows, which is what, you know, if it's warm out, that's what you're dealing with, to really get it cold fast, eliminate that bacteria, have nice safe meat. Resting meat right on these coils cools it down much faster, much better than the modern freezers which pump the cold air in. These, they don't make anymore, they're hard to find, but if you can find a used one on Craigslist, we got this used one. Uh, that is the one that my butcher, that we used to use back in Connecticut, suggested we buy this freezer, we used one of these freezers. That's the ones he kept in his butcher facility because they were just the best quality, best kind. So if you can find one, and there's no link below for that, but you gotta just find that on Craigslist. A Couple other things I usually use on a butcher day. I have these giant, really big, uh, bowls. Those are awesome as you're cutting mussels and tossing them onto the table just to toss them into the bowl, keep them clean, keep them off of your tabletop. This is the Lem all-in-one uh, twist and seal packaging solution. I use that when I'm grinding meat to package. I have a grinder which is up on the shelf over there. Uh, I am not going to be grinding meat today so I didn't take it out. I'm going to be saving the grinding for another day. I don't use the chop saw, that's just there because this is my workshop, so ignore the chop saw. Although you could probably, well, maybe we'll use the chop saw today. <laughs> One more thing I use a ton on a butcher day is a good old food saver vacuum seal system. This is a system, I'm not sure if you can buy this one anymore. I'll put a link to the more updated version. That was one that Costco sold that was really nice. Um, vacuum sealing is worlds better than paper and you know tape. 
Paper and tape doesn't last. A vacuum sealed animal you butcher yourself, cool down real quick and get in the freezer can last you literally years. I don't know if you want to eat meat that's, you know, three years old, but it will still be good. It might, you might not like the idea of doing it, but the point is bacteria doesn't grow in the freezer and when they're vacuum sealed in the freezer, there's no freezer burn, there's no, you know, bad uh, oxidation. So vacuum sealing really extends the life of your products. We find if I kill two, three deer a year, uh, two pigs, a couple goats, we put that in the freezer all vacuum sealed. By the next season, we've moved through all of that and nothing has gone bad. If you use paper, things will get freezer burnt. Uh, sometimes the paper gets ripped. It's just not as good quality. So if you care, you put the time and effort into your butchering, make sure it stays really good. So don't forget the tools that we have and that we use are listed below. You really just need a place to hang the animal that goes up and down preferably. You need a good tabletop. You need a good fridge and freezer, a couple saws, a couple knives, and at that point you're ready to butcher. I am not going to show how to butcher a deer in this video. If you really want to see how to butcher a deer, we have a whole playlist right there that shows every single process step by step. So check that video, that series out if you want to see how to butcher it. But I am going to start butchering because I got a lot of work to do today. I got a lot of butchering to do. So thanks for watching. Set yourself up a nice little butcher st setup at your homestead uh, because there's, I actually really, I'm looking forward to today. I'm gonna turn the radio on. I'm gonna listen to some podcasts and I'm gonna turn this beautiful animal. I was really fortunate to be able to harvest, which you can see in that video. <laughs> uh, I'm able to turn this beautiful animal into some amazing quality food for my family. That always gets me fired up. funny it's raining outside right now and it reminded me that my very first deer I didn't have a garage with lighting I didn't have a tractor to hold it up with I was outside I hung the deer from an a-frame ladder and I was working in the rain cutting that first deer up so if you can't do all these things yet don't let that stop you the point is try to find yourself some way to lift and lower the deer Try to find yourself some way to have a table to work on and some way to get your meat cool quick. Whatever your first setup is, you'll get better and better. I've been doing this now 11 years. This is my 11th version of my at-home butcher shop. It's way better than last year's version and way, way better than my first one. Start somewhere and grow from there. If you would like to know more about butchering, Become a Homesteady Pioneer. Monday night, we're going to have Jamie Waldron on, a butcher who has been in the business for almost two decades, answering questions and helping you figure out how you can butcher from your homestead, how to make it simpler. You can join us live and have your questions answered. Click here to become a pioneer and join us Monday night for that live show.